let's pray then we'll start father we thank you lord thank you for this day that you've given us master thank you for the privilege of calling you our father lord thank you for the freedom that you've given us lord yes lord where your spirit is lord there is freedom there is liberty and master we thank you for the freedom that you've granted us lord freedom in our hearts in our minds lord and also the the access that you've given us lord to your very presence father god we thank you we thank you master we thank you lord father we pray that lord you'll continue to equip us in the things lord that we need to be equipped in and uh, lord the things that we need to learn and be strong in lord i pray father god that um, you will establish your word in our hearts lord and in our minds father god yes master we thank you we thank you we bless your name we give you all the praise we give you all the glory at this time master in jesus master's name we pray amen amen okay so last class um where did we stop about the the local church worship ministry or the worship team and uh, the difference between that and uh, and a band right uh, what you would call as a band well it's it's similar you know in the sense you know when you typically call a you know what you would call a music band uh, or even a worship band is uh, is a team right you have a team of four of people five people whatever however big that the team is and that's a that's called a band and uh, the objective um, could be in objective is okay ministry right and in the kind of we were looking at the history of the music and how we saw that there is this contemporary christian music right or christian contemporary music ccm as it's called as, as it is called so there could be a band which is putting out songs and right? composing songs contemporary christian music and not necessarily the objective need not necessarily be to lead people to facilitate people to worship god right and also this band need not be part of a local need not always be part of a one local church right helping in the local church uh, enabling people in the church uh, to i'm uh, ministering in the church to in the area of worship right facilitating people to encounter god to worship god in the spirit and so on so it need not be that it could be very different so so the objective vision the mentality of the band could be very different right so that is what we saw right um not saying that all bands are bad right but when we compare it with worship ministry and what is required of worship ministry uh a band however good it is <clears throat> may not fulfill that the reason being you know one of the main things that we see is that a band is uh, like when you see you know, look at some some of these bands uh, any band that you can think of that you can name christian band or uh, even otherwise can be any kind of music have you heard of uh, some old band called abba a b b a no okay boniem anyone said no boniem you not heard sorry oh someone said oh, boniem okay chai <laughs> apolia yeah. have you heard the song um, by the rivers of babylon yeah it's not a christian song by the way <laughs> they though they it's from the psalms it's um, uh it's by this band called boney m a b o n e y m and uh, you know some some song so uh so the when you look at the band you see that there is a identity or a brand image that is created around the band right okay the drummer is like this the singer is like this lead singer is like this and uh, you know the the person who plays the electric guitar is like this the bass and, and so on right so the band itself has a brand image right they are maybe like a very cool band or very you know very aggressive or violent kind of a you know so there is a brand image which is built around the 
band so that it can actually sell more music right? that's the intention right so they'll sell more music and and they are catering to a particular age group and so on right so so that's the thing now we can't have that kind of a mindset for a worship ministry right for a worship ministry it's it's selfless when you look at worship ministry it is the focus the the vision the focus and everything is on the lord it's not on the man right so one needs to be very careful so that kind of a mindset is not helpful for a for a worship for a worship team <clears throat> uh, a band mindset is not helpful for a worship team right in a worship team also you know you see that there are people who are more people who are being added on right we see the gifting of a person we see that a person is called for worship ministry <clears throat> and because it's part of a local church there are many opportunities to serve like right? at least 52 sundays and the same pe person need not be part of the team every sunday so we see that there is the option there is a scope for people who are called skilled anointed in this particular area to be part of the worship team so but when we when you look at a band they, this is how they're going to be right there could be some additions but very few changes right because this is how the band is uh, and uh, they're not going to change you know team members every now and then because the brand image goes and then they're not going to make changes every now and then because of the quality of the music and 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 you know the marketability of the music and so on so so all that cannot come into the worship team right so it's totally different <clears throat> so in the worship team yes we are we are we are not against adding people in a worship team also you see that um, it's uh, it's serving right it's about serving when the word minister or the word ministry itself means to serve right so it's uh, of course now it has come to mean something else you know when you look at government and you say chief minister prime minister right? it's, it's come to mean a title and a position of privilege and all that power and influence but actually when you say minister it means to serve right a servant is a minister so that servant um, heart to minister and to you know in in this area of worship to serve in worship may not be part of the band the band mindset is about you know sometimes it's about privileges you know uh, it's about maintaining a certain image and so on right uh, having certain entitlement and so on right so that should not creep into a ministry because um a ministry uh, in worship ministry it's all about serving now you know that is something that needs to be uh, we need to be careful about okay and uh, yes um it all kinds of people people of all ages a cross section of uh, people are part of the worship ministry the worship team uh, whereas a band has set people right so so that's the thing um so these are some differences that we can see you know about the band and worship ministry so band performs right band does not band does not necessarily care about um you singing along of course you know they will also they'll in the band they want to engage the you know could the group audience but that is not their objective their objective is to perform the objective is to perform well so you can hear the songs that they're playing you can watch what they're doing right so they can wow the audience they want to play at a very skillful level at an excellent level and they want you to listen right whereas a worship team or a worship ministry what is the focus is the focus on you know listen to the song that we are singing or is the focus on facilitating an encounter with god it's obviously the second thing right you want to facilitate an encounter so you're drawing people inviting people you know just like that song it says come now is the time to worship come now is the time to uh, 
um, you know, go before our God. So that is the thing. The, the, the focus is on facilitating, inviting, serving, pointing people and enabling everyone to, to have that conversation with the Lord, to have that, you know, that come to that place of worshipping, adoring uh, Jesus. Right. So that is the so in 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 effect, the worship team really points people to the Lord and becomes invisible. You know, I remember reading an article called The Invisible Worshipper, right? Where it talks about the fact that hey, once you've you've made that uh, your responsibility you know, that you want to facilitate people to um, encounter the Lord and uh, and start that you know, that communion, deep communion with the Lord, then you literally become an invisible worshipper, right? You're as a team, you're as a, you know, as a lead worshipper, maybe leading by example, facilitating, but literally after that, you become an invisible worshipper. So that is the mindset of the worship team, right? Okay, so let, let's move on to the next uh, topic about... Um, about worship ministry itself, a little more details about worship ministry and what it involves. Right? Okay, I'm just going to share the notes here. Okay, so um, the worship ministry, um, uh, it's, it's when, we, when we think of worship ministry, we know that it, it is not just about leading worship. It's not just about, uh, you know, uh, ministering in worship. It has other responsibilities and challenges. Okay? Challenges regarding leadership and skill levels in the team. There are you know, technical challenges, um, people-related you know, uh, challenges, um, feedback which people give, right? um, and certain worship uh, team members, people are able to appreciate, certain others they don't like for whatever reason. So, you know, many different... Uh, Challenges are there, right? As part of the uh, worship ministry, so handling these uh, ministries, so handling these challenges is also part of it, right? Then the organizational aspect of it, right? How to get people, how to train people, how to um, you know to nourish nourish people in the word so that they they are growing in the word, and all that is also part of it. So it's not just about me going or me rostering someone to lead worship, right? You make a schedule, you put a team together and saying, okay, now this team is there for this particular Sunday, you know, and my responsibility as a uh, as someone who oversees worship ministry ends with that. No, it's not that. So it goes beyond that. You know, you're looking at how the team can grow. You're looking at how can we sort things, you know, difficulties, challenges that the team is facing how can we solve those things how can we uh, take the team to a higher level in god right so that they themselves are worshiping god in spirit and truth at a depth and at a personal uh, you know intimacy and relationship and at a personal depth prior to how it was with them right so it's a journey so all these are connected and there are other skill and technical, um, you know, challenges and responsibilities as well. Okay, is it is the team equipped in terms of skill? Is the team equipped in terms of even the tools that they require? You know, in terms of instruments, in terms of uh, whatever equipment that they require. So, is the team resourced? You know, is it does the, do they have the res required resources, right, etc. Uh, are 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 we spending unnecessary, uh, you know, money on unnecessary things? You know, even that one. So you're stewarding it well, right? Okay. So there are four areas of leadership relationships, right? When you're saying, okay, worship ministry leadership, there are four things, four relationships, um, which really matter and which require our attention. Okay. Now we need to. We need to focus on that. The first one, obviously, is our relationship with God. Right? As a worship uh, ministry leader, our relationship with God is 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 important, very important. 
it's not just the public activity of ministry, but our personal time with the Lord. And I think we, over and over again, we have been emphasizing, right? We've been talking about that. We've been emphasizing that, right? Just the, just the business, I mean, busyness of ministry or the involvement in ministry in whatever form, you know, day in and day out, we could be handling the word of God. We could be talking about the word to people, but our personal time with the Lord uh, in the secret place with God is of utmost importance, right? So, um, so especially, you know, if you're saying, okay, worship, uh, I'm part of the worship ministry, okay, this is how I contribute, maybe as a musician, maybe as a worship leader, I play an instrument, I sing, sing and I do all this. So then, that is what we do publicly, right? So do we sit when nobody's watching and do we worship the Lord the way we do publicly in private? Right. So that's a thing. Right? I might play an instrument. I might, you know, sing. I might, whatever. You know, I might just be. I, I might just be playing an instrument even sometimes. Right? But do I worship the Lord in private, the way I lead others in public? Right. So that's a very important question. So if it, if, if I'm in worship ministry only to do this in public, you know, not just worship ministry, any ministry, it applies for any ministry. And particularly for now, since we're talking about worship ministry, we need to ask ourselves this question, you know, uh, am I doing this or is my team doing this? Is my team having a thriving, ongoing, continuous relationship with the Lord that is growing or are they opening the Bible only on Sunday, you know, in front of the church congregation saying, okay, let's turn to Psalm 100, you know, enter his gates with thanksgiving. And then, you know, so, so these are things that we need to ask. So our relationship with the Lord is of utmost, utmost importance, right? So uh, only then will we see our, you know, our fruitfulness uh, as a worship ministry, as a worship ministry overseer or a leader. The second one is our relationship with our family. Okay. So family, you know, it could be uh, maybe you're, you're living away from home or maybe with the family. Many times our family doesn't is not a priority, right? Things at home are not a priority because we feel that, okay, this is too boring or, you know, these are people who are with me all the time and uh, I don't need to give priority. So many times the family gets neglected, right? So family, our relationship, our connect with the family is is important, right? Because uh, we could we, we have you know you could be a son or a daughter, you could be a you know a husband, a wife, and you know in the family, you know what is our how is our relationship with the family? Is it good? Is it bad? Are we constantly fighting? Um, are we bitter, right? Do we have a grudge? We've not, you know, forgiven people. All that matters, right? So, our relationship with the family is important because, again, family is God's design. As much as ministry and call to ministry comes from God, family and placing God has uh, designed the family. So that is also from Him. So, so that's equally important. Okay, and. What affects the family affects us, right? We maybe if, if a person is married, if the marriage is affected, uh, there are challenges and difficulties. Then you see that that affects the ministry as well. You know that kind of overflows into the ministry, right? So or uh, restricts, hampers ministry. So we need to be careful, and we need to ensure that the family is not. Um, overlooked right the third uh, thing that we see is that the worship ministry is, does not work in isolation right it's part of we need to understand we're part of the bigger picture of the bigger picture meaning the vision of the local church that the ministry is part of right? that the worship team is part of or the worship ministers are part of so 
So what is very important is the the relationship, the cooperation uh, with the pastor right, or the pastoral team or the senior pastor of the church, um, you know, and and the team. So many times, yeah, you know, they they see each other as enemies, right? So, right. It, that is not it. We are actually we come under, we are submitted to the uh, you know the vision and the leadership of the local church, right? Um, and I, I remember, you know, when we were part of another church, and uh, well, the challenge was that the the church itself and the pastors, all believers, right, did not really have a vision of what worship was. Okay, that worship is spirit and truth worship. That it's it's not about you know singing or it's you know that it can be expressive. Right? So they did not have, the church did not have a uh, understanding of it, full understanding of it. Okay? So they, they could sing, right? They would stand and sing, sit and sing, and that is it, right? But if you ask them to, okay, go ahead and just lift your voice and worship the Lord and just talk to the Lord, they will not. Nobody will do that. <coughs> Sorry, because they didn't have the understanding, they didn't have the revelation of it, right? So now, the worship team uh, that we were, we were part of, well, that was that team was actually very hungry for God, wanted God to move. Um, so we ended up looking down on the people, right? looking down on the very people whom we were supposed to serve, or looking down on the leadership whom we were supposed to be submitted to, right? Just because the leadership did not understand worship or did not have an understanding of, you know, what we can do in worship and how we need to, you know, worship and so on. So, um, so it was a very, uh, very difficult thing and a very bad attitude, unhealthy attitude that we had as a team, right? Uh, about the pastor, about the people. Constantly we would complain, oh, these people, they'll never worship. You know, these people, you know, we tell them to lift our hands, they are sitting, you know, crossing their hands and sitting. We ask them to do this, they are, you know, they're just looking at us. They're not, why did, we, we never ask the question, why? You know, why are they doing that? So we would, you know, kind of force and, and all that, and we did all the wrong, you know, all the mistakes then. Um, and not really praying. Right? Not really praying for the church, not really praying for the pastor and, and the team and so on. So, so the thing is, we need to understand that there needs to be unity. <clears throat> yeah. So if not, yes, we need to pray. We need to work towards it. Yes, things may not be always the same. Right. Uh, we need to you know, work towards it, and it's a work in progress. It's a it's a it's a process. Right. So some things that we need to uh, you know have some important uh, aspects. In that relationship with the pastor leadership, respect, right? Respect to the authority, accept the directions, decisions. That doesn't mean that you don't see things differently. We can always discuss, right? Uh, but <clears throat> but we can discuss with respect, right? We don't have to be disrespectful. Okay, consideration, which means that you know you have different. Maybe you you differ on certain things what we should do or how we should do it how we should start the you know the worship time or how we should end the service we may we may have different differences right but then you consider right you consider each other's viewpoint right um, consider the leadership of the pastor the the experience that the person has so so you know uh, so do that, and 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 vice versa. Like for the worship, or the senior pastor also to consider the um, the worship ministry and the worship leader, and and because it could be maybe that senior pastor is not skilled or you know, does not have the ability. So you can always consider and reconsider their decisions, right? Okay. Then third thing is communication. Okay. So, like we were studying yesterday in life skills class, you know, communication is very important, and a breakdown of communication does not help the relationship. Right? Or if there is miscommunication, you know, misunderstanding because of communication, that also does not help the relationship. Right? Okay. A fourth area 
that we can look at. So we looked at you know relationship with God, relationship with um, uh, with our family, relationship with our pastor. The fourth one is relationship with our extended team members, right? Um, meaning, maybe the team is united, but also you know other team members, maybe the people who take care of our you know, of the technology, the people who take care of the sound, and uh, and so on. So we need to understand that uh, even within the team that there should not be unhealthy unhealthy competition in any way unhealthy comparison right? unhealthy putting down of people right so we need to uh, have a healthy relationship within the team and also healthy relationship within uh, you know other team members so this is something which needs to be worked on Right, because Satan chooses to intervene. Satan chooses to you know, bring division always. Right, so we we know that when there is division, then we are we don't we are not in that place of oneness. We are not in the place of agreement. Right, and so that is a very unhealthy thing, especially when we want to together with one heart and one mind, we want to worship the Lord. Right, we want to facilitate worship. Now we want to help others encounter Jesus. You know, how can we do it when we ourselves don't have the oneness of heart and mind? So this is something that is an ongoing thing, right? It's not just one thing. There could be other challenges, or maybe you know, on a, a month down the line, there could be something else coming up, right? Which threatens the unity of the team, right? Which uh, which threatens the you know the communication within the team, the relationship between between the Team members, so we need to, you know, be careful, be mindful of all these things, right? Okay. Okay. So, what are the goals of? Any questions here before we move on? Okay. No questions. Okay. What are some goals? You know, we can look at as a worship ministry. Uh, you know. What are the goals of a worship minister or ministry? Right, um, some things that we can aim for. Right, maybe if you're overseeing a worship team, a worship ministry is to nurture, right, to nurture the people, to to nurture the people so that they are they are encouraged, they are inspired, they are rooted in the word. Right, so to nurture them. Okay. What does it mean to nurture? It's mean you know if you if you look at a plant and you say okay you're nurturing a garden or nurturing a plant it means to water it means to take care of it it means to protect it means to keep other things that are you know attacking you know, it could be a insect or some weeds or something like that so there is this aspect of protection so that that is what it means to nurture so so think of it like that right rather than okay I'm the expert and I'm here to give you the you know, uh, in you need to listen to me. You know, I'm the expert. Rather than having that attitude, have a nurturing attitude. Yeah. So how can how can I build this person up? Right. How can I build this other person up? So you see that everybody is different right? in the team. Everybody is different. Everybody is in a different uh, level of spiritual maturity and growth and Christ likeness. Everybody has different challenges. You know, different backgrounds they come from. So. Uh, sometimes we need to take some time to, you know, sit back and take a step back and then see, okay, what are the challenges of this person, right? What are the difficulties of this person, right? And so, how can we nurture this person to overcome and come to a place of strength, right? So, nurturing. Right? Um, second one is to uh, create effective, consistent, and beautiful worship environments, right? So, meaning. You intentionally create create this environment for people to worship. Okay. So when we say creating an environment, it means that a place which is does not have place, you know, not not just about the physical place, but whatever it is that we are doing, we do it in such a way that there are no distractions, that we are not hindering people unnecessarily from you know from drawing near to the Lord. Hindering people from worshiping, so so we um, do all that is possible to create that kind of a uh, environment, maybe with music, maybe with uh, with uh, our you know with worship and prayer. Right. Third thing is to establish longevity. 
what does that mean that means that okay if people if people who are there if they are not there anymore right maybe people move maybe they they stopped coming they have other reasons you know they 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 are unable to give their time and uh, and their talent and resources for the worship ministry maybe they move on right so does that mean that everything comes to an end we need to think right or can i establish longevity how do we do that we need to look out and see are there people who are skilled are there people who are you know can we encourage people who are maybe not as skilled as they should be but can we encourage them to further develop themselves they have a talent can we encourage themselves can we encourage uh, them to develop themselves so they come to a place of um, being skilled etc and, and so that they can be part of the team right so so these are some things that we can look for these are some goals that we can uh, aim for right okay um so there are some daily tasks or frequent tasks of running a worship ministry okay so let's look at some of that you know maybe in the bible college itself you would have actually come across this and maybe you're doing this you know one of the things that we see in the bible college is that everybody everybody has a scheduled a timetable or what we call as a roster right there is a cleaning roster there is a daily devotion roster what else what else is there what word word every every day every day yeah what else? supernatural roster okay, so the multiple rosters which are there right so this what are these rosters for so that people are being scheduled for that particular day for that particular um, you know service or event or whatever right so so this scheduling is very much part of the worship ministry so you can't say you know it is it is boring it is difficult right because uh, when we look at worship ministry we see that it is a uh, uh, a lot of people are volunteers like we might have some people who are on the team who are who might be staff but a lot of people are volunteers so uh, they are volunteering their time right they cannot give their time as much as a staff uh, as a full time staff uh, can give but this is what they can they can volunteer their time they can you know, this is um, they can do this right so with that in mind uh, we need to we need to know that we need to have an effective scheduling process right so uh, finding out their availability and uh, you have uh, a process by which you can schedule them right and typically you know for uh, for all people's church here in bangalore right we have how many locations five locations right and uh, we have six services right now right because central has two services and then all the other four locations have one and now north has also started to so which means we have yeah four yeah so it's it's more than uh, uh, so seven services right so the task of scheduling right for all these services is is it says it's because it's a weekly thing right so we need to schedule so here in apc what happens is we do a monthly schedule right monthly roster so we check ahead the previous month maybe the 15th or by the 18th of the month they check for availability okay which sundays are you available september for example for september by around 15th or 18th of august they checked right saying um you know we have five sundays you know 1 8 15 20 to 29 five sundays in september so which are the you know sundays you are available you know uh, how many sundays can you give uh, which sundays uh, are you available to play so play lead whatever and so based on that the schedule is made okay so this is something that uh, uh, that is a part of it you cannot escape it right this is a, and the scheduling tools are there scheduling uh, you know maybe even apps are there technology is there we can use that but whatever works best you know for your church or your ministry or that particular you know um, place use that use that very well okay right? okay so even initially when things are small the same person is 
leading every Sunday, right? Like uh, I think certain certain places, the the person is the worship leader, the person is also the pastor, the person is also the <laughs> you know the whatever sound engineer. Everything is one person, right? But that's a season, right? It will pass, right? Uh, and then there will be others whom the Lord sends and who have a similar vision and who will be part of the work, not because they get something out of it, because they want to serve. Right? So, um, yeah, so the Lord will send and then you can, you know, roster. So this whole thing of scheduling happens then, right? Uh, you have a question? No? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. This kind of like uh, some, I saw some churches, like there is a worship team. Okay. Not only one, two or three worship team, but the problem is like the pastor will take the worship. Means like there is a team is leading worship. Before the preaching, the sermon time only, the pastor will come say some words. And sometime it will go to the off scale. Sometimes mm -hmm. it will go. So, how to talk to those kind of pastors? Mm. And even on them, I'm leading the worship, same thing happened. Like it was fully distracted. They all worship. Oh, so okay. how to talk to like that? Pastor? Yeah. See, one thing is to uh, uh, it's a it's a sensitive thing, right? Because uh, maybe uh, uh, the person who's leading, I mean the the pastor who's ministering, uh, wants to sing, wants to lead in worship, but is not able to, and it becomes more of a hindrance rather than a you know edifying time. So I think the thing is to have an honest conversation. Right to say, Pastor, you know, you suggest, you suggest the song, we will sing it, and right? we'll do that. And also, um, yeah, someone who the past who can speak into the pastor's life, right? So maybe I don't know, pastor's spouse, maybe, or some some senior person in the church. There will be some elder, you know, uh, that person has to speak, right? so that the pastor is not. I mean, takes it well. But some people are very defensive. You know, how can you talk like that to an anointed man of God? So how dare you talk like that? <laughs> so you know, then it goes bad, right? The whole thing. But um, yeah, if there's a if, if there's a solution, it has to be a honest conversation, and probably someone who can whom he the pastor can receive from that would be the best. Or you wait for the moment. Right, you you pray, wait for the moment, and when pastor says, "Okay, maybe there's a, you know, like a feedback session or you know, uh, an informal time when the pastor's alone, you know, it's the, and you can do it on a one-on-one -on -one kind of thing where uh, it is honest conversation. At the same time, nobody needs to be on the defensive. See, suppose both of us are talking, and then there are people listening, then. Uh, even though it could be the truth that you're sharing, the other person gets very defensive because you're saying in front of so many others, and uh, you know I feel I feel maybe insulted and you know maybe insecure, and so maybe a one-on-one, -on -one private personal time would help. Right? So this is this is one way. Like I remember in um, one church that we were part of, um, we would uh, the. The people would say, you know, he's, he's, this person again, this pastor used to sing and sing very loudly. So they'll cut the mic, right? Say, tell, the, tell the sound engineer, hey, cut the mic, cut the mic. So they'll just reduce it. So uh, at one point, uh, he became, he, he, was, he was very offended. He said, you know, why are they cutting the mic? Why are they reducing the thing? I'm, I'm ministering. And they are, you know, he took it that way. So nobody explained it to him why, you know, it, one, one thing, it was very loud. And a uh, thing was that it was going off key, so uh, it was becoming a uh, hindrance. But uh, yeah, so those are some, so communication is very important. That we need to respectful communication is very important. Without that, the relationships will go bad. Right? Yeah. Any other? Um, also, we need to understand that uh, when it comes to worship ministry, you know the. We we cannot actually fight against the vision of the church. That's another thing. You know, suppose the vision is does not include freedom in worship. You know, it's not there, is or it's not uh, something that they value, that the leadership values. 
then it's very difficult to go and try and make a change as a worship leader uh it's very difficult so the thing is it has to flow from the from the top leadership right from the pastor so they need to have the same thing and or or at least you know they may not be skilled but at least give the freedom and say you know okay this is what we want to experience so you know i want to give this person who is skilled and anointed to go you know to uh, maybe lead in extent at times of worship whatever it is you know so that that always helps so we can't uh, against the vision that the church has that the leadership has yeah so that's something to keep in mind right okay so scheduling rostering is one thing then um some of the frequent tasks uh, are to pastor the team members i think that is something that we saw right to be to take care of the team members um so encouraging encouraging you know when they have when they go through difficult times etc but also to encourage them to get deeper in their relationship with god right to encourage them spiritually right so to be in touch with them like to encourage them send email send text um or maybe a call like encourage the team members right maybe visit uh, and and do what you can right uh, and it really helps <clears throat> not only that but you know when the when the when the worship ministry leader or worship pastor does that it creates a culture right where everyone is also encouraging one another and that's a beautiful thing right where every team member is encouraging each other right so we need to do that uh, the third thing is also third task would also to be in constant communication with the pastor right it could be the senior pastor it could be the pastor uh, under whom this worship ministry comes under right to be to meet to be in constant communion right to talk about the vision etc and also to talk about the you know that some of the practical parts of it right one is the big picture okay where are we going as a church etc then the the other thing could be the daily things or the weekly thing you know sunday some of the some of the details of it um like okay is the worship too long you know and some feedback about okay uh, you know what is going right what is going wrong and um, yeah there are times when you know pastors uh, given you know the team feedback saying okay uh, this could be avoided and uh, you know maybe this could be included uh, maybe sing a hymn you know those kind of feedback um comes from the pastor or you know uh, some things like uh, uh some things like even you know the the words when the when it's not clear right when the people who person who's leading worship uh, they are singing but the words are not clear or they are singing something in a tune that is different from the song you know sometimes we do that right spontaneously we just ad lib but then if you're leading and if the person if the team i mean if the congregation the church is not sure of the melody is not sure of the song right and if you're not singing the melody or the original tune of the song then they get misled you no know, they don't know they are confused right so so things like that we have received feedback uh, as a team so so it can be about the service or it can be also about the the big picture the vision of the uh, ministry itself right okay then another aspect of it is the cost right um, budgeting there could there could be meetings that are happening so this is more of an administrative thing but this also requires our attention right like training there could be equipment to be bought right uh, there could be uh, <coughs> excuse me there could be other things that need to be for which money has to be spent right so um, so one needs to uh, understand that and also uh, get into it right sorry okay um then another task is planning for 
the week and for the year. Okay, so um, there are a lot of songs. There are a lot of uh, you know new songs coming up in every every almost every month, I think, right? Uh, so as a worship pastor, one needs to be uh, in touch with what is happening. One needs to be in touch with okay, what is happening around? What are the kinds of songs that are being released? Um, what is God doing? What is the Lord doing? Uh, you know, in the on earth right now, you know, in terms of worship, in terms of uh, the move of God, what is happening? To be to be in touch with that, right? Now we we I, we know that we can't sing all the songs. <clears throat> Again, when I'm when I'm saying, uh, you know, songs, we are t typically talking about melody and music and and words and so on. You know, it's a uh, when you look at a song. It is something that enables, that helps, right? facilitates. Right? It's like opening a window, and it's like uh, showing the person, you know, look out of the window and look at who God is. Right? It's something that points to a different aspect of God, a characteristic of God. It draws the person to have an encounter with God. It also unlocks something that the person always wanted to say, like always wanted to. Or something that is locked inside, you know, the words and you know, communication. Uh, how do I say this to God? You know, it's locked inside, but a song will actually open it. It's like a key which opens it, right? So, well, we are not dependent on songs, but then at the same time, songs enable this. Therefore, we need to be aware. Okay, what are some some songs that which fit in with the season of the church? Uh, you know that season that the church is going through, or what is it that we are going after? What is it that we are pursuing together as a church in this particular season? Right, like maybe the word of the Lord, or the promise that God has for that particular church, you know, for that season, for that year or so. So. What are some songs that go in line with that? What are some songs that would help the congregation to inspire the congregation like, to go after the heart of God in this manner? Right? Maybe it's uh, something to do with the word of the Lord. Maybe it's something to do with the, the promises of God that God is releasing for that congregation, so on. Right. So <clears throat> the key thing is this: you know, listen to many, select few, and uh, you know learn and use fewer things um, so that always helps right um so there could be some songs which are you know not culturally relevant you know it could work in some place it's a great song but it, it doesn't really culturally it's not relevant um and it's maybe as a as a, as a style you know it's not something that you you know as a congregation it may not work right so we need to make such choices, okay, and also plan ahead. Okay, plan ahead for every season, right? Um, typically, January to December, if you see, right, there are some seasons or some things that we focus on, like some messages that we focus on through the year, right? So maybe when we start off in January, it will be about the focus for the year, right? Uh, the word of the Lord for the year. Um, what God wants to do and what we are uh, typically focusing on as a church. What else? In a year, if you see, what could be some... Through, sorry? Yeah, Christmas time, right at the end, right, December, we uh, again focus on you know the coming of the Lord. We focus on uh, the gospel and what the Lord... You know, so, so songs that actually enable that, songs that help that. Okay, then we look at you know Good Friday and Easter, and we talk about the cross and the resurrection, and so on. So it'll help if the church has a like a like a pulpit calendar, you know, like a preaching calendar. Okay, this these are some things that we're going to look at through the year, right? So it'll help. So in line with that, we can plan for the entire year, right? Okay, we'll stop here and come back after the break.